Today, I'm going to introduce you to a lady who is inspiring thousands of people around the world to get strong in later life. Renee Landers is a competitive bodybuilder at the age of 72. That's amazing in itself, but it's all the more remarkable when you hear her full story because where she is now could hardly be further than in her 50s when her mobility was affected by chronic back pain. She turned it around and she's going to share with us today just what it took to get into the best shape of her life in her 60s and 70s, how she maintains her incredible physique and how she's living proof that you're never too old to find and live your dream. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn how to age well, look and feel good for longer. I do that on YouTube, on my website, honest.scott and on the Honest Channel podcast. So let's hear now from Renee, who's living her best life at 72. Renee, thank you so much for joining me all the way from Houston in Texas. Hi, Claire. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to, to be a part of your uh, podcast. Hopefully we can share some great information together. Oh, I'm sure we can because, you know, often on this channel, I'm interviewing doctors and scientists and skincare creators to try and get some insight into some of the available options and latest thinking around how to look and feel our best as we age. But from time to time, I spot someone like you who I think is just inspirational and I can't wait for my audience to hear your story and to get some motivation and advice from you as well around staying strong later in life and living your best life in later life as well which is your mantra I know. Yes absolutely. So you're 72 now but um, I want to start by asking you to take us back if you will to your mid-50s when life was very different for you and I believe you were experiencing a great deal of pain and difficulty in moving, which seems incredible to believe now. But can you explain what happened? Sure. Um, I actually uh, had some back problems that went back into my late 20s and 30s. And, um, and I just struggled through it, you know, for years. Uh, but when I got into my mid 50s, I had it was like my body just was telling me, you know, you're going to have to do something. I kind of stayed into my fitness program as best I could. But if I walking was hard, uh, sometimes I would just drop to the floor. I just had so much pain in my lower back. And the doctors some years before said, stop running because I was a big runner when I was in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop that. But, you know, you ignore these things. You put them off. I was a single mom. I had a small business. And uh, what, what I didn't have time for was to have some surgery that would put me down where I couldn't run my business or take care of my son. By the time I got to my mid-50s, it was getting worse, and uh, I wasn't able to do as much. My quality of life is what was really changing. And um, I started wondering, okay, I could end up in a wheelchair. I started um, worrying about my business. Like, can I do my business in a wheelchair? I have a commercial building permit expediting service. And we had these plans that we have to carry. I'm an active person as far as I'm energetic. I started buying, uh, you know, jewelry making kits, things that I could do sitting still just in case I couldn't walk. I mean, it was, it was wow. really a scary time. In, in my late fifties, um, I'm just so grateful that I, I ran across an awesome surgeon, uh, a neurosurgeon who did this particular procedure. That is what I apparently needed to, uh, to make, everything's so much more wonderful with my mm. back. So I had uh, spondylolisthesis was my diagnosis. And that's like a, kind of a, you know, overlapping of, of your vertebrae. And I ended up having a lower lumbar fusion of my um, L5 and S1. It's the lower, the lowest ones in my back. Okay. So those two were fused together. And that surgery was done when I was 58, about 58 years old. And I was scared to do it. I mean, I tried all kinds of other methods. I mean, who wants to go have back surgery? It was a scary, scary time for me. Uh, however, it was like, okay, um, this is my last resort. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've got to have better quality of life. There was no fun. I couldn't go dancing, which was one of my favorite things to do. Traveling was tough because, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, so I had this surgery uh, at 58. Um, the surgeon was kind of a young guy. I even said, how many of these have you done? You know, and he was in a large group and he his specialty was just doing this one surgery, nothing else. And it was laparoscopic. So we did the surgery and he just said, OK, well, you uh, get your rehab and then you can go do whatever you want to do. I mean, he said, wow. people 
do whatever they want. Uh, golfers play golf. You know, people do everything. He said just two things. He didn't want me to run and mm-hmm. he didn't think uh, stretching yoga would be a good idea because of that fusion. It could pull the fusion. So those okay. are the only two prohibitions that he gave me. I got my rehab in my in my late 50s after that surgery. And probably it took me, you know, about a year to start, you know, feeling much better. And um, and I still I was getting close to 60. OK, that's mm-hmm. scary in itself. And I was going through menopause during all this, too. I just thought, OK, I've got to get serious about the rest of my life here. So I went to a doctor and um, I said, I want to feel good, you know, help me. So this doctor at Baylor prescribed hormone replacement therapy for me when I was 60. And okay. he also, he also, uh, which, which is a game changer. I'm going to tell you not, maybe not everybody thinks so, but for me, it has been mm-hmm. a game changer. And he also introduced me to a trainer a, who has his master's in kinesiology. He knows how to train people with injuries. He worked for the Houston, Texas football team. You know, he has all kind of great uh, credentials. And he introduced me to Dustin. And that was 12 years ago when I was 60 years old. And Dustin is still training me today. And I mean, it's like I just get emotional about it because I'm just one of the luckiest people around to to have got the right doctor to give me the Mm -hmm. hormones and then introduce me to the best trainer for me in my situation. That's kind of how things started uh, for me, uh, where my life was really changing uh, in my early 60s. Well, what's so extraordinary is that you've kind of gone full circle. So you got this second chance and boy, have you run with it. Because I bet if we went back to when you were in your 50s and feeling so awful, you could never have imagined that at the age of 72, you would be in the shape that you're in and a bodybuilder. Yeah, no, no, I never would I have dreamed that. Never, uh, never, never. And I think it gives people hope as well, because I think there are a lot of people who, you know, probably starting in their 50s, begin to feel, you know, that muscle loss happening and the, the mobility starts changing, the energy starts changing. And I think that people assume that from there, it, it will naturally go like that with aging. But we know now that when you put the effort in, you can actually maintain, and as you have built that muscle mass to quite an impressive extent. But tell us how that all came around, the weight training and the bodybuilding. Okay, and uh, and you're right. There's no limit. That's mm. what people need to remember. Do not limit yourself because of your birth year. So I want to say that right off. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Dustin started training me, and my main thing was, oh, I want to feel strong and fit. I wasn't saying, hey, I want to be a bodybuilder. That was never in my thoughts ever. And um, but he was there to get get me going. And and I was lifting weights about three times a week. I was probably about uh, 15 pounds, 15, maybe 20 pounds heavier then in my early 60s than I am today. I wasn't trying to lose a bunch of weight. This was more about being healthy and strong, not about, you know, weight loss. And he's training me like anyone that he would train who was 60 years old. I'm a pretty healthy eater. I was eating pretty healthy. You know, after a couple of years of doing it, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a I'm a go-getter. I'm, I told Dustin, well, what else can I do? Okay, I'm lifting. You know, what's my next thing? You know, is there some other sport I can do uh, to go to the next level? So I was probably about 62, a couple of years. In, and he said, well, Renee, I can see you on stage. And I'm going, what are you talking about on stage? And he said, uh, doing bodybuilding competitions. And I'm going, well, what does that mean? Well, and so I did my research, but I said, there is no way I can put on a skimpy, sparkly bikini in my 60s and get on stage in front of a bunch of straight. I said, no way I could do that. And I said no for years. I mean, that is probably my only regret that I said no. I limited myself for so many years because I was afraid of that sparkly bikini. A time went by and I went to Germany with a girlfriend and I came back. And I looked at some pictures of myself and her, you know, our vacation pictures. I was seeing this, you know, sort of plump, you know, plumpish senior citizen in my pictures. I mean, I know, you know, I don't look bad for my age, whatever. I realize that. But I just said, oh, no, there's a better Renee in there. I I can do better than that. And because I didn't want to just, you know, you it slowly the pounds come on, even if you're lifting weights, if you're not paying attention. Yeah. So um, so I told Dustin, I said, okay. I, w- I want to drop some pounds here because this is, I can do better than this. We doubled down on, on what we were going to do with my fitness. 
uh, I started watching my nutrition and nutrition is so important. I set a goal to lose one pound. Okay. And we worked and I lost one pound and I set a goal to lose one pound again and I lost another pound. So we did this and over four and a half months, I lost 10 pounds, Claire. I've- People at the gym were noticing because, you know, they'd seen me there, but, you know, I was kind of looking the same, but I'm starting to change. And it's all because I decided that, you know, I could do better than where I was. Um, so Dustin was still talking about, I can compete. He was never pushy about it, but mm-hmm. you know, we would talk about it. And so I said, you know, well, I guess maybe I could think about it. At least I was thinking about it, but still I was too scared. Go a few years ahead to like 2020, whenever COVID hit. Okay. So I'm still lifting weights. I've still stayed, kept that 10 pounds off. And I told, I was freaking out. It's like, oh, oh no, we cannot, COVID is not going to take over my life. The gym's closed. And I just said, Dustin, I can't, you know, I can't do, we're not going, I'm not going to go gain weight because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to figure out how to train even without the gym. Well, I have a big patio back here and Dustin and a few of my other uh, mates over at the gym came a few times a week to my back patio and we worked out and trained there for a few months during the time that COVID had everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kept our social distancing and all that. So I got to continue that. And it, and when that was done and we went back to the gym, okay, I said, okay, I'm going to compete before I turn 70. That's what I told Dustin said, okay, I'm going to do it. And, And if it hadn't been for COVID, you know, I'm not sure that I would have made that decision. And so uh, at 69 years old, I actually competed in my first bodybuilding show uh, about an hour's drive from here at the Lee Labrada uh, Classic. And it was quite an experience. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that Dustin kept encouraging me and that I decided to do it. So that happened. And that was so cool. You put that sparkly bikini on and you walked out onto that stage at the age of 69 Wow. There's one right here. This is not the one, but this is one of many that I've worn since then. I did it. And you know what? I did it scared. That's the thing. Well, that's what I was going to ask. How did you feel when you walked out onto that stage and you're in your bikini for the first time? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? Well, you know, I was scared to death, of course, but I did it scared. But I remember, um, thinking, okay, well, and I just kind of feel like I have my guardian angels around me. I said, okay, angels. And my mother, I said, okay, y'all help me get through this. And I got up on stage and got out there and just did the best I could. I'd never done it before. I don't know. It was exciting, scary, all those things. And, and, you know, the people out there watching were very supportive and most of them really didn't know how old I was because they don't announce that. Uh, but I was in a the category they had was 50 plus. So mm-hmm. I was competing with women 50 years old and yeah. up. And I was at least, you know, 10 years older than than the, the next uh, oldest one. Uh, but it didn't matter. You know, that was my chance to, to compete uh, at the right time in my life. Uh, and I did it. And it was just uh, it was just quite an experience that, that I'll never forget. And and really, that's that's where I really fell in love with it is after that competition. I, I say I found my people. It's yeah. like these are like minded people. We, we think alike, you know, about our health. It's not just how you look. You know, your physical appearance is just a byproduct mm-hmm. uh, of what you're doing for your health. You know, that's yeah. really what it is. Um, so it was exciting. Oh and, oh, and here's the other part. So even though it was my first show I'd never done and my chances of winning anything were like nil, I kept visualizing receiving a trophy. I visualized this for my whole prep, which was really about three or four months. It wasn't as long of a prep as most people do. There were like three categories I competed in, um, you know, different age ranges and things like that. Uh, And one of the categories I competed in was called open. That means any age from, you know, 20 to zillion, you get up on stage and you compete in your height class. So I competed in that. Now, at the end of the show, you know, I was up there three times at least. And, you know, no, no, I didn't win anything, but mm-hmm. and it was time to go. In fact, I, um, I'd already put my little robe on. You have this little show robe you wear. Mm-hmm. I put it on. I started gathering up my stuff. But the expediter said, OK, ladies, line up. You too. You know, he won me. So, so it was time to get back on stage again. But I didn't know why, because I thought I'm done. You know, I didn't win anything. And so he lined us up and, um, and got on stage. And I ended up getting this trophy. Wow. I got sixth, pl- sixth place in bikini open class A. And uh, 
I got a tra- it was sixth place. Okay, it wasn't first place, but it was sixth place. And, and it was just such an honor. And it was so exciting. And I'm telling you, creative visualization is very powerful, Claire. That's all I can say. Well, so I hear so many podcasts that I listen to um, talk about this now, the power of visualization and, and uh, sports people when they're coached, you know, are told to visualize, um, you know, the success and the win. So, yeah, there's a lot to learn from that. But I mean, what was the reaction of the other competitors when they found out how old you were? I mean, they must have thought, my goodness, you're in incredible shape. Well, they... they um they were surprised and I did, it's not like I broadcast it, you know, but no, um, but it was, it was, um, that, you know, they were happy for me. I mean, all of them were supportive. I, I remember another show, a woman backstage that I competed with right before we went on stage, you know, she was like 62 and she just, just she just found out how old I was right mm-hmm. before we walked on stage and like she was flabbergasted. So, so it is, it is an unusual situation. And, that's the whole thing that has surprised me about this, Claire, is that mm. I just thought I'm just going to get up there and compete. I had no other idea about anything. But apparently when I posted it on, on um, Instagram, which I didn't do Facebook because I have too many people in my age range on there who I didn't want to be judged. You know, nobody knew even before I competed that I was going to compete. I just ended up developing a whole new group of friends in this bodybuilding community that are like-minded, supportive. And uh, I found out that apparently I was an inspiration to people. I never dreamed that that would be the case. I just was doing my show here and trying to, you know, do a bodybuilding show at, at my age. And what I discovered was it's not the norm. And I have been giving people inspiration that I never dreamed I would do. I never, that was never a part of it. It's been a thing. And I'm just grateful that I could inspire anyone uh, to uh, to know that it's never too late to get fit or just to chase any dream you have, even though this wasn't a dream I had for very long, but it's had been a life-changing experience for me. Well, and I've seen um, videos of you on Instagram doing unsupported pull-ups. I mean, just showing incredible strength. How does that feel at 72 years of age? to be, I'm guessing, in the shape of your life, really, are you? Yes, ma'am. I am in the best shape of my life. You're, you're so right. It's like, I, it, it's, an, it's incredible, really. Uh, and those pull-ups, that's something I'm working on right now. And that's because I set a goal. Even though I have been lifting weights for years, you know, I always wanted to be able to do those pull-ups, mm-hmm. but I never made it a point. So this year, my goal is 10 unassisted pull-ups by the end of the year. And I've got to seven so far. Oh. And so that's what you're seeing on my Instagram is the yeah. pull-ups as I do progress, but it feels fantastic. Um, it's just, it's empowering. It really is. Yeah. It's, it feels so great to know that I'm, I'm strong and I'm pretty healthy for my age and I am uh, living my best life. It's, it's fantastic. And how do you think it impacts on you um, in terms of energy and so on? Because most people by the age of 72, they would be feeling it. They would have stiffness. They, you know, do, do you ever feel your age or do you just literally feel decades younger? I don't feel my age hardly ever. I mean, once in a while, I'm a little tired, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's rare. I mean, I have a lot of energy at, for some reason. And a lot of that, I think, is because of my attitude. I'm eating right. I'm, yeah. I'm doing the right stuff. I feel like some of that I inherited from my mom. She was a very energetic woman. And uh, I just feel great. I, I just, I don't even think about the age. I guess that's another thing. I don't feel old. I don't even think about my age. I just yeah. don't even believe that. I don't even believe I'm this old, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I think that's very important as well. I mean, I've actually, I was looking at studies the other day, um, where they could actually show that a difference in thinking and how you think about age affected lifespan. So the people who didn't fear age, um, embraced it, didn't really think about it, didn't concern them that much, certainly didn't, um, you know, fear a deterioration in old age, uh, had the longer lifespans in in general. So it affects everything. I want to ask you about your regimen day to day as well. I mean, how long are you in the gym? What are you lifting? What what weights are you lifting? What are you doing? Well, actually, you know, since I'm competing, I am I'm working out more than I normally would be, mm-hmm. and I am um, so I'm I'm lifting 
you know, four to five days a week right now, because in a month I'm going to be competing again. It's been almost a year since I competed. So I am working out several more days instead of three to four days a week. I'm, I'm doing five days a week, maybe six days a week. But really, my time spent in there is about 45 minutes uh, lifting and a cardio is maybe 30 minutes. Not too much cardio, but it's not anything crazy like I'm not spending hours in the gym. In fact, cardio is people do too much cardio and you don't make any progress with that. You just wear yourself out. And I think that's another reason that I'm not worn out uh, is because I'm doing the right amount, but not too much. So I feel like the, the lifting of the weights and the, and the cardio that I'm doing is good. But the nutrition is the other huge part of it. If you're not eating the, your food correctly, you can't sustain that energy or, or build your muscle or anything like that. So I think that's another big part of it is, is my nutrition. And are you lifting very heavy weights? I mean, what, what on average are you lifting? See, because of my fusion, I, you don't see me lifting any big uh, one, those long bars. Yeah. I, I almost never do. I mean, the Smith machine is the only machine and that's a controlled thing, you know, where you're okay. squatting with with that. And, and Dustin's watching me do that too, because of my fusion, there's a lot of exercises I don't do. I never bench press. That is not part of what I can do because of my lower lumbar fusion. Mm -hmm. I do other things instead of that. And that's another thing on my Instagram that I, I'm posting about what, what I do and what I don't do. And also my YouTube channel, I'm building it up more and I'm going to be posting a whole set of what I do. What are you lifting? What weights on average? Here's the thing. Like <clears throat> I do a lot of uh, free weights, dumbbells. I, I do my, and what I'm doing now is probably the most I have ever done. And so for lateral raises, you know, where you come up like yeah. this, yeah. Uh, 15 to 20 pounds, that's the most. Okay. Uh, and you know, right now we're lifting. So that's, is that each side you're lifting 15 to 20 pounds each side? Yeah. Yeah. And I do them to get, you know, at one time. Yeah. Yes. And I'm, so I do those and I do, and it varies. Like if I'm doing 20, like today I, I've already done my workout and I only, I did, I did 20 pounders and only six. Yeah. So of course the idea is progressive overload. You've probably heard of that. Mm -hmm. That's where you're, you know, you're lifting and you're lifting heavier and you're going to do less uh, reps. And that's where you grow into that. And right now, four weeks from competition, uh, we're trying to grow as much as we can. I mean, you know, it's just, it's the direction you go as you get close yeah. to competition. So, all right. So, so, but in the reality is when I first started, I was probably doing eight pounds, five or eight pounds. And that was a few years ago. So people need to be patient with themselves when they're starting out lifting and not think they have to do something crazy. I mean, 20 is the most I've ever done. So that's not huge. I mean, that's heavy, but you know, yeah. it's, um, it's not like, you know, 40 pounds. Yeah. And it shows you don't have to lift crazy weights to get your definition because you've got a spectacular muscle definition. I can see it even on the camera. Yeah, I do. I've got some. Uh, and that's also because I'm leaning out, you know, you're, you may have muscle there, but <clears throat> if you have extra, a layer of fat on there, you yeah. don't see it so much. And a lot of us um, have the muscle because we've been working out for years, but it's not going to be as apparent if you if your diet isn't you know on point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as far as the weights go, I mean, I fifteen to twenty pounds is the most. With my curls the same way, and mm -hmm. I do you know these whatever you call mm -hmm. those shoulder press, same thing. You know, fifteen to 20, 20 pounds max, and that's okay. and that's kind of a regular upper body thing that I do. I'm not lifting crazy, and uh, and I never will. Um, we'll push the max as much as we can. Yeah. but never will be doing something crazy because honestly, you know, I don't need to what for, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, there's no point in it. Uh, a lot of times I think they call it ego lifting. That's when you get hurt, when you decide you're going to lift extra heavy mm -hmm. and then you get hurt. And yeah. that's something that, that hasn't happened because Dustin is, he's on it with me, you know, he's being yeah. careful. And, and that's the thing. People need to be patient and do what is okay and slowly increase your weights over time. And um, so it's five days a week. Are you in the gym for about an hour at a time or how long are you spending? Well, I'm about about an hour and a half um, mm -hmm. by the time I get there. And, you know, when you're doing your weights, you, you got to breathe in between. So you can't just do one after the other. But I'm probably, you know, 45 minutes, maybe an hour if I'm taking more rest in between and then 30 minutes on the elliptical, more or less. So about yeah. an hour and a half. And yeah. I mean, there was a time when I was spending a lot more time there doing too much cardio. And yes. that is not 
you don't need to do it. That's a myth, you know, uh, and we're not going for skinny here anyway. Right. Yeah. And there are other ways to burn your fat. And that's usually by lifting more and and cardio. Too much of it can just uh, raise your cortisol levels and uh, make it harder for you to lose weight. So people yeah. just need to be uh, don't be afraid of of lifting weights and don't worry so much about the cardio. Well, you know, I spent about an hour and a half in the gym as well, but unfortunately most of it's in the sauna and the steam room. <laughs> so I go like that super fast in the gym and then I run down to the sauna and I'm like, ah, I'm done. I love that part, but I do need to, to up my time in the gym, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, I've got my priorities a little round the wrong way, but you're motivating me, Renee. I'm learning. Oh, good. I, I, I want to be, I'll be your best cheerleader. That's what I tell people. I'm not a coach or a trainer, but I will be your best cheerleader and, you know, reach out to me and I'll, I'll give you some encouragement. I'd be happy to. Oh, bless you. Um, I'd love to know what you're eating as well, because I'm taking it. You're talking about lean. Are you going high protein? So I would just say this too. Way before I was uh, competing for bodybuilding shows, mm -hmm. I was already eating healthy. I log my food. Literally, I have uh, an app. I have a Fitbit, but there's other, there's all kind of other ones. I do log my food and I've been logging my food since 2015. So almost 10 years. And, and you know, you, so to me, that's another important thing. And it's not really hard to do. You know, I've got the Fitbit app here. Yeah, I was more mindful. Yeah. Uh, you're more accountable when you see at the end of the day, you know, what you've eaten. Uh, it makes a difference. So, so I would say that is something that has been an important thing to me. And of course, I was already doing that way before I was competing. So when it was when competition time came, I was already on the same kind of track. But um, basically what I do is, is, you know, there's a few important things and you probably already know them uh, with nutrition is um, that we need enough protein. That's number one. And the rule of thumb, as, as I hear, is at least one gram of protein for every pound of body weight every day. I'm about 116 today, but so around 120 grams of protein every day. How do you get that? People say, oh, it's so hard to eat my protein. Well, uh, I never ate breakfast for years. I didn't mm -hmm. eat the right stuff. I mean, I just, I ate okay, but you've got to eat. That's the first thing. And I literally eat five meals a day throughout the day to get my protein. And it's really not hard. And I do meal prep. Uh, so I get, um, so I have, in fact, I, I sh I'll show you a little bit here. So I'm, I bought a bunch of cod at Costco. And, and so I have my, um, you know, 130 grams of cod in here. And for today, you know, I have my little package of guacamole that I'll have and my carrots, you know, nothing fancy, but you know, I'm a pescatarian. So I, I don't eat meat. I don't eat chicken, pork, and I don't eat any of that. But I do eat uh, all kinds of seafood and I eat eggs and egg whites. Those are my main sources of protein. I would say protein bars and protein powders. That's your last resort. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. But that if you say, well, I'm going to have a protein bar and that's going to be my lunch. That, I would not say that's, no. that's cool. I would say that's not the way to go. That's just an emergency situation. It's, a, it's processed food at the end of the day, isn't it? I do have these, these little packets of tuna or salmon. And mm -hmm. I carry these everywhere with me. And I have another thing. It's a pescabor ahi tuna. It's a jerky strip that's made out of fish. And right. it's really yummy. And, and it's got about 15 grams of protein and 110 calories. So, so the main thing is you start in the morning and you eat some breakfast, which is, oh, I don't like to eat breakfast. I just want, well, I have coffee early and then I have my breakfast. And my breakfast is going to include, you know, some egg whites, maybe four ounces of egg whites, one egg. And uh, I do use collagen peptides, uh, vital proteins. You know, that's another thing, which I think really helps for your skin, your nails, your hair. So yep. I do that. And that's some extra, extra protein. And then I do sprinkle a little oatmeal, just uh, organic oatmeal that you would get from a little packet in. All oh, well, you're talking to a Scott here. So we love our oatmeal, our porridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. right. And it's so good for you. Yeah. So whoever says it's not, don't believe them. I know. So, I yeah. So I feel the same. And, you know, the thing is, so I'm getting some protein and some carbs in that meal uh, with my oatmeal. And then I go to the gym. So, I, and that is important. You need to be, you need some protein and carbs before you go to the gym. 
and you need it after also, ideally within an hour. And that's why I carry my food to the gym with me because people uh, miss meals too much. And I did it for years, you know, single mom, business yeah. owner. I, I, would, I would wait till two o'clock in the afternoon to eat. And I was like terrible. So anyway, so you got to have that meal in the morning. Uh, you know, I don't want to hear people say, oh, I don't feel like it. No, this is what you do for your health. This is what I've been doing for my health. And that's why I am who I am today, because I know there's things you got to do. And you have those meals throughout the day, some small meals. You do your meal prep. And I do, I, I cook my rice ahead of time and I put it in little containers. I cook my fish. Uh, I've got everything ready. I'm always ready. That's what it's about is planning ahead so you don't make bad decisions. I would love to know what um, friends your age make of this because you must know some people that you've met years ago whatever that are in a completely different position to you at 72 what did they say to you when I first started competing I didn't tell my friends and I have a lot of friends you know that we do we dance together we cruise together mm -hmm. uh, we vacation together and uh, and I didn't even tell them because I was worried about being judged before that mm -hmm. first show and um I finally, you know, came out with it and posted it on, on the Facebook. And, and I'd say 95% of these people are still supportive of me mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I'm not a preacher. I don't preach about it. I don't say, Hey, you need to, live. I don't do any of that. I'm just there. I'm representing. Uh, but in general, my friends have been accepting my friends who are not typical fitness people. And I do things with them all the time. But I have noticed, in fact, just yesterday, one of my friends said, well, I just joined the YMCA and she's, she joined the same YMCA as me. So um, so I'm kind of leading by example. That, that's how I feel about it. So I feel very grateful that my my friends I've had for years, I'm still great friends with, despite the fact that maybe I'm a little different than they are. And do you find yourself hanging out with younger people a lot? I mean, I've seen you sort of talking a little bit about that, about how you have this new lease of life. You're, you know, just the, the confidence, the body confidence now as well. How does that change things in terms of your relationships? Well, like really after the first competition, then, you know, I'm doing more and I'm meeting all these people. So now it's been almost three years and I have this giant circle of friends and, and most of them, because there's not many people in their 70s doing fitness, you know, weightlifting and all that. So I have tons of friends that are 20 years older than me easily. The bikini company that sponsors me is Angel Competition Bikinis. Mm -hmm. They make these bikinis. Okay. And they have a cruise every couple of, they've had a cruise a year. And I just, I did one last year with them. And I was there with the owner of the company is 30 years old. She has a twin. So that the owners of this company are young and all the women around are young. So I have this wonderful, uh, wonderful group of uh, women and some men supporters of me. And it's like no big deal. I mean, I just feel like I'm with my peers, you know, and and they're way younger, anywhere 35, 40, 50, uh, so much younger than me. And it's like no big deal. And honestly, I don't even think about the fact that I'm that much older than them. They know when they get to be in their 70s, this can be them if they want to be healthy and fit yeah. in their 70s. They can do it too because I'm here doing it. So I'm yeah. great. I'm so grateful that, that I can do it too. Oh, absolutely. And I'm guessing that men in their 70s just really wouldn't cut it. Well, yeah, you know, I'm not looking, but, and, you know, I would love, you know, it's, well, whatever. The, the thing is, it's not that I'm looking for younger, but men, most men my age, like 99% of men my age, think old, look old and act old. So they are, they're doing all the things that, that I'm not interested in doing. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're all sitting on the couch. You know, they don't, I'm, I'm just saying in general, sure, mm -hmm. there are some exceptions, but most of the men are just, you know, they're, they don't take care of themselves. And uh, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to be looking for my equal or better, yeah. you know, if, if I'm going to get in any other future relationships or anything like that. It's just, uh, because it's all about being like-minded and, yeah. uh, you know, you want to be eating and walking and talking and doing all those things like other, like your, your peers are, you know, you don't want to go off with a different person who has a whole different agenda than you. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's different. It's, it's tough. It, it is tough because I'm, you know, the young guys, uh, you know, they're too, too young. Uh, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of caught in the middle, but, uh, but I generally date guys probably in their fifties. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think somebody your age, it would be hard to keep up with you. They'd be 
they'd be keeping you down. <laughs> I wanted to ask as well, you know, you do, you um, have a big following on Instagram. Uh, you've made a lot of impact there, but what do you hope to achieve really through your posts and your content? What, what's your message? I kind of feel like um, I've kind of found my purpose here in life. It's, it's to let people know, inspire people that, that it, it, they don't need to give up on themselves as they age. You know, don't do that to yourself. So I think this is my purpose. I feel like if I'm going to be this fortunate to be this strong and healthy and feel so good and confident, it's really my obligation to, to share that. It, it would be selfish if I did not share this. I know what is possible. I, I never thought this would be something I'd be doing. I've never dreamed that I would have a big following on Instagram, um, but it has grown and it's really because I'm sharing, you know, how I did it and, uh, what I do every day to stay fit and and people uh, want to know how it happens and it happens because you're intentional about it and you make a decision to take care of yourself and you do it consistently and that's what it's all about so to me it's just it's just my purpose uh, and I I feel that we got to get the word out you know it's never too late to get fit uh, and one of my little things I say is no old speak I've done a little thing on Instagram mm -hmm. it's like don't don't talk about your aches and pains. Don't engage with others about their aches and pains. You don't talk old. You know, we talk, think young, be healthy. So no old speak. That's how I say it. Oh, I love it. Brene, I want to bottle you and I want to drink from that bottle. And then I want to hand the bottle out to everybody over 60. I don't know how we can manage that, but that's what I'd like to do. That would be great. I mean, we, we need to get it, get the word out, you know, yeah. somehow. I wish we could yeah. do that. But, but you're helping right now by us talking. I mean, thank you for doing this because that's what's important to me to get the word out all over the place that uh, this is a possibility. Uh, it's, it, it's not, uh, you know, out of your realm of possibilities. It's part of not limiting yourself. It's believing that you, you don't have a limit and we don't. It's just no. that we have been, the, the old talk is all over us. You know, when you get older, you become irrelevant you know you become invisible well that's only because you let it happen and uh i'm not ready to let that happen i have found this personally hugely inspiring and i know that everybody watching will thank you so much renee it's been an absolute treat and i'm going to be following you on instagram and i hope all my viewers as well will do the same thing and cheer you on as you uh, as you take your kind of your mission and your life's purpose to the wider world. Thank you. And thank you, Claire, for giving me this opportunity. This is what we need to do. We need to get the word out. Thanks so much. I'm thrilled to have uh, had this time with you today. And I'm here for you. And if people want to reach out to me, I try to answer any uh, you know messages as best I can. Uh, I'm here to help. Oh, you're a gem. Thank you. If you enjoyed this interview, then check out the description where I've linked to other inspiring conversations like this one around healthy aging, as well as Renee's Instagram page, so you can continue to follow her journey. For those new to the channel, if you hit subscribe along with the notification bell, you won't miss future content from me with new videos around skincare and how to age well shared here every single week. For now, thanks for being here today.